I am so glad that you are here and that we can do this training. We are talking low-dose naltrexone for chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. This is a super exciting training to get to do because it is very rare that I can give such glowing um, feedback about something uh, in that has a high success rate uh, and a low side effect rate. So welcome. Let's get into it. So I'm going to share what I've learned and my experience in case it can help you. We're going to talk about what LDN is, some of the research around it, my experience, and I'm going to give you a lot of extra resources. Um, some of this is a bit complex, but I've made it as easy to understand as possible because there is a load of information out there. There's research out there. So if you want to get technical, you can go and do that. Um, and remembering the terminology, CFS, FMS, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia syndrome. Uh, that's basically all of the technical stuff. <laughs> so a little bit about me just to get started in case you're brand new. I don't know if you've been following me for a while or not. If you have, yay, welcome back. If you're new, hello. I'm so glad you're here too. I'm Melissa. I have four small boys. I am the founder of melissaversusfibromyalgia.com. I'm a yoga and meditation teacher. In real life, I do fundraising and communications, but my real dream is to share this information with you. I lost a lot of my life waiting for a diagnosis and then waiting for a doctor to help and waiting for research to show me what to do and then trying all the things all by myself. But now, after several years of hard work, I have reduced my pain levels by half, dramatically reduced my fatigue levels. I sleep a lot better, but not great. <laughs> I am a mum of four beautiful boys. I experience less brain fog, less anxiety, less digestive symptoms, all of those kind of side symptoms. I do what I want within my limits, and I am actually really thankful every single day for how much I have improved. My blog was um, featured as one of Healthline's top 19 Fibromyalgia blogs of 2019. My YouTube was um, included in Feedspot's top 15 YouTube channels list. Um, my yoga has been profiled by Dr. Teitelbaum of From Fatigue to Fantastic Book and EndPain.com. I've written two books, Melissa vs. Fibromyalgia, My Journey Fighting Chronic Pain, Fatigue and Insomnia and Pregnancy and Fibromyalgia. I facilitate two Facebook groups, the Yoga for Fibromyalgia and the Melissa and the Melissa, <laughs> and the Pregnancy and Parenting for Chronic Pain and Fibromyalgia group. Uh, in addition to this, I've created loads of worksheets and templates and workbooks and micro courses. Um, and kind of my pride and joy is the Foundations of Yoga for Chronic Pain and Fatigue course, which is um, basically a complete beginner's guide to starting or adapting practice with chronic pain and fatigue, um, which was a dream of mine for a long time. And now it is real life. So let's just have a quick um, disclaimer here. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not claiming to be. I'm a patient who has done a lot of research and I'm sharing this research with you to make it easier. So any piece of information I share is for you to do your own research and take into conversations with your medical team. So I share research information and personal experience because I know how exhausting it is to wade through what actually helps. And I also know that sometimes it really helps to approach your doctor with information uh, and when you can come to them on that level of working together instead of asking them for help, sometimes that makes for a better conversation. Do feel free to tell me if you have more up to date information, a different experience or helpful comments because I want to help as many people as possible. So, Lodos naltrexone for us. What is it? So naltrexone is an opioid antagonist, so it works a bit differently in the body when taken at a lower dose. It's usually prescribed for alcohol and opioid addictions at doses of 50 milligrams or more. And low-dose naltrexone is anything from 0.25 milligrams to 6 milligrams. Uh, there is an impressive list of conditions that um, LDN can help. It's on the LDN Research Trust website. Uh, the link is there. You'll hear me refer to them a lot because that's where you're going to get the most information. Now, LDN is one of the few things that Dr. Ginevra Lipton can say that the odds are pretty good that it can reduce your pain. So of the doctors I follow who prescribe it, they, they sort of suggest around 50 to 60% success rate 
um, for who Lodos Naltrexone helps. Put a comment below, let me know, have you tried it? Have you heard of it before? Keep the conversation going because I would love to be able to share more information than just what I'm giving. I want your experience and information too because that is actually a really big source of information for us. So how does LDN work? LDN's blockage of the endorphin and opioid receptors in the brain appears to trick the brain into a kind of rebound effect to produce more of them. The four to six hours or so that the drug remains in one system is sufficient to boost the level of endogenous opioids, those naturally found in the brain, for 18 to 24 hours. Given that endorphins are known as natural pain relievers, having more endorphins floating around might be a very good thing for people with fibromyalgia, ME-CFS and other pain disorders. And that's from the Health Rising website. So naltrexone at lower doses temporarily blocks opioid receptors and it encourages the body to make more endorphins. So it's encouraging our body to do something that it naturally does anyway. It lowers inflammation, acts as an analgesic, that's pain relief, and boosts the immune system. So these are some pretty exciting things for it to do. And there is no narcotic effect, meaning you cannot be addicted. Now this is something that comes up quite a bit, uh, and I will refer back to this again, but there is no narcotic effect. So let's talk contraindications. So uh, there aren't too many contraindications. Uh, so the naltrexone full dose general contra uh, contraindications, so that's six times fast. Um, so people with organ transplants and those with liver disease. However, um, low dose naltrexone is often found to be okay, but that's always a question of checking with your doctor, checking any interactions, checking your individual medicines, all of that just to be really careful. Now those who take opioids, some doctors use a protocol called ultra low dose naltrexone, which is very, very, very low doses and um, carefully monitored. Uh, I'd suggest that the purpose is to get people off the opioids once LDN is helping as opposed to a long-term um, situation. But that is one um, solution for those who are already taking opioids and the thought of going off them um, is very scary. But generally a contraindication is opioids um, and any other kinds of drugs. Now the question of um, alcohol comes up quite a bit. Now a lot of us with fibromyalgia and CFS are kind of sensitive to chemicals. So um, it depends how much you can tolerate. Some people can tolerate one or two glasses um, a period away from their dose. I can tolerate one um, of those 2% um, citrus beers a few hours before bedtime, no worries, but I probably wouldn't do more than that. Um, but you just kind of have to play with it and see how you feel. But I certainly wouldn't booze it up and then take your medicine straight away. But as usual, take um, medical advice. Side effects. This is um, one of the exciting parts of it, okay? Um, this is what makes Lotus Naltrexone special. It has virtually no side effects and most are transient. So most of them happen when you are just starting and when you're trying to find the right dose for you. Now, people often ask about weight gain. Weight gain isn't usual at all. Weight loss is often more usual. Um, I think the full dose naltrexone can be given to people with um, who are struggling with obesity. Uh, I have lost a little bit of weight myself taking it, but I think that's just because I have improved and therefore my activity levels have increased. Um, now it can um, do things to your appetite. So some people have felt reduced appetite and some people have felt increased appetite. It looks like it's kind of a normalizing thing. So if previously you've had less appetite or more appetite, it seems to help bring to a balance, but um, appetite has been affected in some people. Now, one that people often talk about is insomnia and vivid dreams. Now, I was initially nervous to take it in the evening because I already had enough going on with insomnia, but actually it helps me sleep. But if it does give you insomnia and doesn't go away, you can try morning dosage. I did have vivid dreams, but they were just transient while I was getting started. Now, they do. Um, there has been mention of headaches. Again, they tend to be transient, but in some of the research studies, if people have stopped taking it, it is because of headaches. Um, but again, these effects are usually minimal and usually transient. 
So what about availability? The um, Aldean Research Trust shows that it's available pretty much anywhere, definitely UK, US, NZ, Australia, um, all of those kind of mainstream Western places. Uh, it's considered an off-label use. So if your doctor isn't confident to prescribe it, even with a research summary, um, I have one you can purchase for a small cost. I have an ebook with um, information and research um, and a summary, which you can give to your doctor and use yourself. Um, but just gather some information to take to them. Um, but if you take it to them and they're not interested in looking into it or don't feel comfortable, um, you can find doctors who prescribe it using the LDN Trust um, Research Trust database. Uh, there are people around uh, and sometimes there are doctors who will do telehealth for it. So don't just assume because your doctor says no um, that it's all over. Unless your doctor's saying no for you for a good reason. If they're just saying no because they just don't know anything about it, then definitely get more information and find someone else. Cost is another thing people will ask about. So it depends what you usually pay for medicine. So for somewhere where you're used to paying quite a lot for medicines and you have your, an insurance system, then it's actually kind of cheap for you. In New Zealand, we have a public system, so a lot of medicine we take is subsidised, whereas Aldean is not, and it needs to be compounded. Uh, so I pay um, about $100 um, um, for a bottle of 90, so that's a three-month supply. Um, but the dose must be compounded from high-dose naltrexone or normal-dose naltrexone. Occasionally, a doctor will prescribe that usual dose and let you compound it um, with fairly simple measurements using distilled water, but they do not allow that here, so I don't know about um, that where you are, but that's certainly something you can Google if you must. All right, again, we just um, touched on this. How do I get my doctor to prescribe it if they're not open to it? The simple answer is you cannot. You can offer research, you can explain the promising results it offers, but if they're not interested, you can't make them. They are autonomous medical professionals, and if they're uncomfortable, they can make the choice not to prescribe it, but you can make the choice to go and see someone else. Who can prescribe it? I think that depends where you are, because in New Zealand, my general practitioner, uh, like my normal practice doctor, gives it to me and has done since the beginning. Some people say they get it from their rheumatologists, um, but there are a list of prescribers on the LDN Trust um, website and some of them will do virtual appointments. So how do you start? The ideal way to go, especially for people who tend to be sensitive to medications, are to, is to start low and go slow. So document your symptoms and experiences as you go and then you might look back and realise that you have improved. So the best practice is to start at a low dose and move up slowly. So your prescribing doctor should discuss this with you, um, but I've noticed a lot of people, a lot of doctors don't really quite know um, how to manage that. I went up in increments until I felt a reaction and I stayed at three milligrams for some time. Four milligrams was too much for me and 3.5 appears to be my sweet spot. I suspect it has something to do with your weight. Um, I am on the lower side, so... Um, I tolerate a lesser dose, but that is just anecdotal. Um, the research studies go straight for 4.5 milligrams. But don't be in a rush, especially if you're sensitive to medications and talk to your doctor. What about in pregnancy? Well, there is a fertility doctor called Dr. Phil Boyle, who has found that using LDN helped keep his autoimmune patients who were previously miscarrying pregnant and to carry healthy babies to term. Um, I've linked to a video um, of him answering the question of whether LDN is safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding, and he considers it safe at these doses. Now, there's always a discussion of cost versus benefits to have for any medicine, any time, but particularly when you're pregnant. I personally took LDN during my third and fourth pregnancies, and even with severe pelvis issues, they were much better pregnancies. Um, because my condition was better managed. I was also able to nurse for as long as I wanted with both and I had previously not been able to. So my first two I didn't get very far at all and I wasn't in a good state. They just weren't good pregnancies or postpartum periods. My third I chose to nurse um, all the way through till he was 13 months uh, and my fourth I'm still nursing and he is coming up to a year. I didn't take other medicines. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well, because in pregnancy, especially late term pregnancy, um, opioids or codeine is one of the few options you can take and you can't take that 
with LDN. So it's always a thing to think of and to talk about, but um, it is generally considered safe. So how does LDN react with pain medications? Apart from opioids, it doesn't interact for most cases, but it is always a good idea to double check. I like the drugs.com website. I also like the LAPTMED website for when you are um, nursing uh, and always, always discuss the medications with your prescribing doctor. But when it's a medicine that your doctor maybe doesn't know very well or have a lot of experience with, it is always good to be checking yourself and being aware yourself. So some resources for you, LDN Research Trust, this is going to be a big resource for you if you are interested. It's got stories of real life people who have tried it, it's got conditions, it helps, lots of other bits and pieces of information. Um, and then I've got three fantastic stories um, that I have heard, Katie's experience from the Painfully Living blog, uh, Donna's experience from Fed Up With Fatigue, and Janice's story, which is also featured in Fed Up With um, Fatigue, but it's real people and their experience trying it, and of course, I will share mine momentarily. So I hope you're with me. I hope that you have noticed <laughs> all those questions we just sped through. I took all of those questions um, from people who have been asking me questions the whole time and from a special call. Um, but if you go to LDN Research Trust um, and if you check out my blog post, then you will find any more answers you want. And if you just Google Lotus Naltrexone Fibromyalgia or Lotus Naltrexone Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, a load will come up. So my experience, I started taking uh, low dose naltrexone um, at 0.5 milligrams. I started taking 1.5 milligram capsule per evening and I added 0.5 milligrams every four days. So at about two milligrams, I started to feel an effect and slowly I titrated up to a dose of four. I went into this experiment feeling that if I could find a 30%, which is a statistically significant result, improvement in any symptom would be life changing and I was right. It took me about six months to get to four milligrams as my body previously couldn't cope with that level. So I experienced vivid dreams and flare ups of things like ulcers and cold sores each time I tried to titrate up too fast. Um, so I believe my body was taking a while to respond because there was more than 10 years of healing to work through. Um, I had had no help basically for about well more than 10 years. So I think there was a lot of background work going on. So the first and the biggest help that Lotus Naltrexone has given me is in sleep. So despite the research suggesting otherwise, the first time I was able to drop into deep levels of sleep was after beginning LDN. I went from sleeping in one or two hour blocks to getting three or four hour blocks. And this combined with my sleep hygiene, restorative yoga and yoga nidra practices has really made a difference. Now I can get, um, I have a Fitbit and they show you the benchmark of deep sleep. Um, and so if the benchmark is here, um, then my usual amount of sleep was, you know, ooh, go that way, mirroring, mirroring, <laughs> was down there. So basically I was getting two to 10% deep sleep. And I think you're supposed to get something like 14 to 20%. Um, so with LDN, sometimes I was hitting the bottom range of normal, uh, which is pretty exciting, uh, especially when you're used to just every single night being a fight. The second thing is pain. Uh, so since about nine months into my treatment, I've noticed a reduction in neck pain. Neck pain has been a 24-7 issue for over 10 years. In 2017, while starting Lotus Notrix, and I learned that my neck issue is actually myofascial pain syndrome. So after throwing the severe recurring trigger points into the fibro basket, I finally had an answer, and the physiotherapist has been really helping me to work on these trigger points through intramuscular needling, which is gently inserting tiny needles into the trigger point and letting it relax, and neck mobilizations. So this in the sleep, um, which is potentially reducing the fibromyalgia, which um, is a perpetuating factor, has helped. So my pain levels were about six to eight out of 10 with severe migraineous headaches. Uh, and daily, this was kind of daily, this is back in 2010. Just prior to LDN, there were about four to six out of 10 with the occasional severe headache. Right now, my average pain levels are three to four out of 10 with constant management which includes pacing, yoga nidra practice, LDN, recovery factor supplement, everything I share in my ultimate guide to managing fibromyalgia post. 
But can you imagine going from daily levels of 6 to 8 out of 10 to 3 or 4 out of 10? It's amazing. And I'm so grateful every day. And I share this with you because I want that for you too. So another benefit is the emotional benefit. Um, so if you haven't lived with pain that entraps sleep and interferes with your daily life all day, every day for over a decade, or been unable to sleep for more than an hour at a time for about that length of time, it's going to be hard to convey the depth of the impact on my emotional well-being. So not fighting to sleep at 3 a.m., not swapping pillows, not getting up and getting my heat pack, applying pain or cream, and basically just not sleeping due to unrelenting pain is huge. So the emotional burden of the pain and fatigue has been reduced. Fatigue. So fatigue is the second of my two worst symptoms with the neck pain being first. And yes, that is not was. I have improved, but I still have a limited energy envelope. I can get through the day on a 30 minute meditation and a brief sit down with a heat pack. I still can't physically stay out past 10 o'clock, but it's a fair trade off to me. Um, pacing is still a key factor to managing well, but I've got a lot more energy to work with than I did before. So one thing I always want people to remember is that low dose naltrexone is one key part of my whole of life wellness plan. It's not a miracle drug and it doesn't work for everyone, but it is so worth a try if you're able to, simply for the fact that it has lower side effect profile and the long term effects. I mean, we've been studying this drug, it's been used for a long time. Um, so that makes me feel so what else can I help you with? I have a free pacing training. Uh, remember I told you pacing is really important. So using the energy we have well um, helps us create more energy. I have the Introduction to Fibromyalgia ebook and I have the 10 Minutes Yoga for Chronic Pain Fatigue series um, also for free. It is my um, passion to show you that the tools of yoga can go in our symptom management toolkit. Um, two of the four classes are not physical at all and one of the four is my favorite tool ever, Yoga Nidra Guided Meditation. Uh, and so I highly recommend checking that out. Uh, and as I talked about earlier, the Foundations of Yoga for Chronic Pain and Fatigue is my dream program. I created it because it's what I wish existed for me. It is how to use the tools of yoga so that we're not creating a flare, so that we're helping our symptoms uh, and just adding to our pain management toolkit, but also so that we can move gently and carefully and mindfully. So if that is of interest to you, I would love to welcome you into that program. I'm so thankful that you um, are here. I'm so thankful that I can share this information with you. If you have any more questions, let me know. Please share your experience. Uh, let me know what was the, um, the biggest takeaway for you. Uh, and if you want that low dose naltrexone research um, handout, I'll also link that. I'll create um, a page on my blog with all of these links and resources. Um, and I also have several blog posts that I've created. Uh, so if you need to be able to go back and check anything out, it's all there. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that this helped and I'll catch you again soon.